Good afternoon. National Assembly for Wales is now in session. On the first item this afternoon, questions to the First Minister. And question one is Jenny Rathbone. Dear what is the Welsh Government doing to um, su support a sustainable steel industry in Wales? Well, we recognise the importance of the steel industry to the economy of Wales. We've consistently raised with the UK Government the need to ensure that Welsh businesses can operate on a level playing field, not only in the UK, but within the UK and global markets. And that, of course, uh, also includes the, uh, the need to do something to address the energy costs that many steel producers uh, face. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Um, Celsa Steel's written to me to say that there is a flood of imports uh, coming into this country which do not even meet um, the sustainable steel standards, uh, BS 6001. And this is putting at risk the very important number of jobs uh, in Cardiff, uh, 3,000 jobs in Celsa Steel alone. Um, now, the, the leader of Cardiff Council is writing to all local authorities to make sure that... Um, all procurement uh, documents specify BES 6001, which is the required standard for safety reasons. Will the Welsh Government um, support the Charter for British Sustainable Steel and look at incorporating that standard for responsible um, sourcing into its own procurement policies? Well, we have made representations to the UK Government about the challenges that the steel industry is facing as a consequence of the growth of steel imports and concerns about responsible, sustainable sourcing. We do welcome UK Steel's Charter for British Sustainable uh, Steel. It does provide an opportunity uh, to safeguard uh, much uh, high-value jobs as well as enable growth. But in parallel, we also need to fully consider the impact such a charter would have on both private and public organisations, and we are looking at this in more detail. William Graham. Um, sir. Um, First Minister, I'm sure with me you're welcome Tata Steel's investment in the new £11 million heavy gauge decoiler, the largest in Europe, which will make uh, the demand, or rather extend the demand of, for products, particularly from the Linwern Works. Um, what, Minister, are you going to do, able to do to help Tata? They've got 100 new products in the last few years, completely diversifying the manufacture of steel in Wales to, to bring these products to the market and to make them competitive in the future. Well, we work very closely with Tata. Of course, I've uh, met with Tata on two occasions in my visits to, uh, to India, uh, and we've seen the investment that has come to Wales as a, a result. Uh, Tata know uh, the challenges uh, that uh, they will face in the market over the next few years, and they are uh, certainly meeting those challenges. We are fortunate that they are a company who believe in investing their way uh, to, towards profit uh, rather than making cuts, and uh, that is something to be uh, acknowledged and, uh, and welcomed. But we'll continue to work with Tata, of course, to make sure that steel production continues to be an important part of the Welsh economy. Rina, have you heard? Dear Chloeth, a dear Premier Doctor Bedan Gwalt, come Harriet and Van Hennep on Galwad and the Am Grabhai policy at Gaffile and a sector go here. This about them Ruimiat can the word right. About the Lord and Kali Gwalt, the Am Ruimo. He can argue with the Anton Busica board, Glenny, name money, cow, or Savon, and my Savon BS where Milagin un. Fodd y gall uh, y llywodraeth y ddangos i hymrwymiad nhw i gefnogi'r diwydiant steer yng Nghymru. Y Dynes yn edig, wrth gwrs, uh, ynglyn â'r ffordd yn, yn gweithio dros y Dynes yn edig yn gyfan gwbl. Mae'n dim ffordd cyfreithiol i mynu uh, bobl i brynu dir uh, o Gymru nag o, o Brydain. Ond, wrth gwrs, mae fe'n bosib i, i sicrhau bod yna safon uh, y dylai pob uh, cynnig chi uh, i gyrraedd er mwyn, wrth gwrs, cael uh, fod yn rhan uh, o'r system uh, uh, caffael yma yng Nghymru ar, ar Dynes yn edig. David Rees. The offer. First Minister, in your answer to the member for Cardiff Centre, you highlighted the question of high energy costs. And I met with the new hub director of Strip Products in Wales last week. Uh, and he also indicated the costs of high energy, which were one of the major issues of adding costs to the tonnage that they sell in, in the product in marketplace. What discussions have you had with the UK government and perhaps with the EU, particularly in, in light of the EU's uh, energy union consider consideration that they announced last week? Well, we've consistently raised concerns with the UK government regarding the challenges that are impacting on energy-intensive industries in Wales. Most recently, uh, last month indeed, I wrote to Vince Cable outlining the uh, need to introduce support at the earliest opportunity and also to provide the industry with confidence to continue investing in its long-term future and that all of the avenues of support are fully explored. It is essential that action is taken sooner rather than later in order to make sure that our energy-intensive industries are able to compete on a level playing field. Question two, Anne Jones. Um, thank you. Will the First Minister make a statement on progress or to 
implement the neonatal sub-regional... Sorry, I've got my computer wasn't working. Sorry, apologise. Will the First Minister make a statement on progress to establish a sub-regional ne neonatal intensive care centre, especially yes. Glan Cluid? I met with the Chair and Chief Executive of the uh, Local Health Board yesterday. This was an issue we discussed. I expect the Board to be in a position to submit the outline business case for the CERNIC development by the autumn. Uh, the Minister for Health and Social Services will shortly be writing to members uh, today, I believe, setting out the good progress already made by the Health Board. Uh, thank you very much for that, First Minister, and I do welcome <coughs> your total commitment to seeing that the neonatal centre uh, does, in fact, uh, as per the independent review, be housed at uh, Sputty Glen Cluid. At lunchtime, I joined other North Wales members to receive a petition from the people of North Wales to the, uh, to the consultant the removal of the consultant-led maternity services, some 16,000, nearly 16,000 people signing that petition. I want to pay thanks to the Daily Post and to Marsha for doing, for organising that, who, and they're sitting in the gallery to listen. Can I just say, First Minister, that uh, when we met with the board, the board told us that um, there were some delays about the framework that was being used to do this neonatal um, centre at Glen Cluid. Can you give me your assurances that you will not tolerate any delays that will hinder the progress of mothers and babies in a neonatal centre in Glen Cluid? Indeed not. I, I can uh, confirm to the member, on top of what I've just said about the CERNIC, that as part of the meeting yesterday, I made it clear that I want to see consultant-led maternity services uh, back at a spotty Glen Cluid within 12 months, as was originally uh, intended. It's right to say that the department has to be rebuilt. Uh, it cannot be uh, suddenly reopened overnight. Uh, but nevertheless, it's imperative that the board work as quickly as possible to make sure those services are restored in the shortest time possible. Darren Miller. Thank you, um, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, I too want to put on record my uh, thanks to Marsha Davis of Little Miracles and indeed the Daily Post for getting behind the campaign uh, in North Wales. It's very clear that tens of thousands of people are unhappy uh, with the Health Board's decision. The petition today calls on the Welsh Government to intervene in the process to ensure that there's continuity of a doctor-led service uh, in Glan Cluid Hospital, in that maternity unit. Will you give your response to that petition now? Well, there is a formal process here where the Community Health Council, for example, can uh, write formally to request a, a minister's uh, attention and possible intervention. They've not done that yet. They've sent a letter, but they haven't made that formal request. Uh, and we wait to see whether that request will be made. But I think it is worth cautioning to say that it simply isn't possible to reopen the department as things stand at the moment. Um, having looked at the uh, issue very, very closely, uh, or rather to, to, to continue with the service, the members right, to continue with the service in the future, the reason is this. There are no trainees there. Trainees were withdrawn because they were complaining about the quality of the training they were getting there. Middle grade doctors are not applying to go there. That's why there are uh, so many locums in place and agency doctors. Uh, and I don't believe it's going to be possible for the department to be where we would want it to be without those issues being uh, addressed. And we know, of course, of the difficulties that were addressed in the Royal College report and the, uh, and the Steel report. The department has to be rebuilt in order for it to be sustainable in the future. And we see, of course, what's happened with, uh, in Morecambe Bay. We would want to avoid any suggestion of anything like that happening in the future in Wales. By, and I, that's why the local health board have had to take action now. Alan Fred-Jones. Gwenolfan,gofaldwysi,fabanodd,syrnig,mae <laughs> a rôl y cyhoeddiad bod yr uh, uh, gwasanaeth uh, sy'n cael ei arwain gan doctoriad yn cael ei dynnu o Glan Clwyd. Pam i fod wedi cymryd naw mis i'r llywodraeth gadarnhau i'r penderfyniad yna? A beth ydy'r amserlen ydych chi wedi osod i beti gadwaldd ar gyfer sefydlu i'r gynolfan? Wel, mae'r ail yn rhoi'r argraff uh, bod dim byd rydig gwyth yn y cyfamser, be wedi'r sydd bydd uh, y gwnidog uh, yn sgrifennu pro'r hawma i ylod eiddo, ond beth sydd wedi digwydd yn y cyfamser, I'm going to go to the board, but I'm going to go to the board. 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 
Um, dwi'n derbyn eich cadan hard chynglyn a sefyllfa ynglaen clwyd, er dwi'n meddwl bod y cyngoriach chi'n cymunedol wedi gwneud y pwynt bod nhw'n disgwylu'r uh, gwynidog uh, ddod i fewn i'r sefyllfa. Ond ydych chi'n gallu gwarantu i ni pnawma felly fydd na dri uned yn hytrach yn y gogledd ar ôl blwyddyn, yn hytrach na gadael i'r bwrdd i achid hwyrach benderfynu yr adeg yna i gau uned yn ei yn Wrexham neu y Mangor. Yn ei felly yw'r bwriau, gaeth weud, does dim byd ffurfiol wedi dod o'r uh, cyngor uh, i achid cymunedol yn gofyn i'r gwnidog i uh, ymyrryd. Os bod nhw'n dod, os bod nhw'n dod, felly os bod nhw'n cael ei ystyrio. Mae'n rhydd ala llythyr, ond dim llythyr ffurfiol yn y ffordd hynny. A, os maen nhw'n wneud hwnna, maen nhw'n ma wahoddau i wneud hwnna wrth gwrs. Uh, fydi gweud o'r blaen, pan bydd y sönic i hunan yn cael ei sefydlu, bydd yna newidiadau yn yr adrannau. Mae hwnna mynd i ddeg, oedd y pawb yn erfyn yna i, I, I ddegwyd, so bydd yna peth newidiadau ta beth yn yr adrannau eraill, wrth gofio beth oedd gwrs bydd y sönic yn wneud yn y dyfodol. Mae hwnna sy'n bwysig yw bod gyda ni um, adran uh, fel y sönic yng Nglan Clwyd, er mwyn sicrhau, wrth gwrs fel oedd o'r aelod y moyn gweld bod mwy o fabys yn cael ei geni yng Nghymru a nid wrth gwrs yn Arw Park. We now move to questions from the party leaders. <coughs> First this afternoon, the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Archie Davis. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, is the smart way to access North America through Cardiff Airport? Depends how much time you have. I'm sorry that you gave such a short answer because major advertising campaign at the moment says that the smart way to access North America, as we can see in the adverts this morning, is through Cardiff Airport and Aer Lingus. Uh, you have invested £80 million as a government uh, in that airport. Surely, if you're going on a trade mission to one of our most important markets, you should be advertising the connectivity that we do have and do enjoy via the Aer Lingus route to North America. Why on earth didn't you make use of that so that you could promote the airport and support the airport management in developing this route? Well, it would have meant me staying uh, or leaving a day before and staying a day after. That was part of the issue. We always look not just at the Aer Lingus link, but also at the KLM link via Skip Hall to see whether that's feasible. But the reality is the timescale was so uh, squeezed it wasn't possible to do it. For example, when I arrived in Washington on Wednesday afternoon at 3, I was then hosting an event at half past 5 on uh, Capitol Hill. Uh, so the time scale is very, very squeezed. But where it is possible and feasible to do it, of course, Cardiff Airport will be the first choice. I think that answer is really disappointing, First Minister, because it was a trade mission. You were promoting St David's Day. One of the key requirements of businesses, as you and your ministers point out, is connectivity and the ability to get from A to B in as quick a fashion as possible. You're, in fact, saying that what Cardiff Airport are doing just isn't good enough if you're on business or a tight time scale. Will you commit today to back up the investment, which, in fairness, you've made in the airport of £80 million, and make sure that, eight, that you make sure as many trips as possible on business that you undertake will go from Cardiff Airport because there is great connectivity via KLM to Schiphol and Schiphol being one of the major gateways in Europe or also the Aer Lingus option which only 10 days ago the airport along with Aer Lingus had a major promotional event here in Cardiff promoting it as a means for business and leisure and yet you undermined that campaign with your visit to North America this last weekend. It was not possible uh, to, was. to get to North America in the time allowed and back again without spending more time there uh, at taxpayers' expense. That was the reality of it. I will always try and use Cardiff. I will be using Cardiff in a fortnight's time uh, wh uh, when I travel uh, once again. I've I always use Cardiff where it's possible to, uh, to do that. But given the fact that it was such a tight squeeze in terms of the time scale that I had in North America, it wasn't possible to consider that option at this stage. But it's always the first choice. Uh, and uh, I would encourage more people to, in to uh, use our airport. He's very generous. He says we invested 80 million in the airport. Uh, I think it's quite as much as that, but uh, nevertheless, I'm glad that he acknowledges the fact that the airport has received significant investment, and he acknowledges the fact that the airport has attracted more business, uh, uh, and it is all the more ironic given the fact that his party would happily have seen the airport close. We now move to lead of the Plaid Cymru, <coughs> Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd. First Minister, there can be no greater responsibility for public bodies than the protection of children from uh, abuse and sexual exploitation. Now, in Downing Street today, the Prime Minister is holding a summit on combating the sexual exploitation of children. The proposals made will have implications for Wales, as many of the matters are led by the Home Office on behalf of England and Wales. 
Are there representatives from the Welsh Government, Welsh Public Services and more imp most importantly of all, uh, advocates on behalf of Welsh victims and survivors at that summit today? Well, I mean, the Leader of Plaid Cymru makes the assumption that these matters are not devolved. It's not quite as clear as that. Uh, there are some areas where it appears to us that matters are devolved. There's no difference in terms of the objective, of course. When it comes to child protection, we shouldn't automatically, uh, automatically assume that because the Home Office is dealing with it, it is not devolved. That's why we are bringing LCMs, uh, like the one today, in order to uh, ensure that the Assembly's viewpoint is heard. Now, on that basis, we have said, and we will always say, that where something is taken forward on an England and Wales basis, there needs to be Welsh representation. We've done that, of course, uh, quite recently, uh, and it's imperative that the Home Office listens to that. Thank you, First Minister, and I know that you've called on the Home Office to include Welsh voices in this process, including the inquiry into child sexual exploitation, which is a non-devolved matter, although I accept the points you make on other aspects of this being devolved. Now, among the Prime Minister's proposals today is the creation of a criminal offence of willful neglect in England and Wales that could impact on teachers, counsellors uh, and social workers. What assessment have you made of the impact of these proposals on Welsh public services and were you consulted on them? Well, we, we take the view that this is a devolved matter. Uh, the view of the UK Government is that it isn't. It, it brings us, I suppose, forward to the St David's Day process and what happens beyond that with the reserve powers model. But that is the view that we've take, taken. That's why we bring forward uh, LCMs in this area uh, so that the UK Government is able to, uh, to legislate. Uh, we would expect, once they legislate, of course, or during the course of the, of the, uh, the period of legislation, that is full consultation, not just with Welsh Government, but where appropriate with the National Assembly itself, and, of course, with those bodies in Wales who might be required uh, to fulfil certain duties as a result of that legislation. Thank you. Um, it's disappointing, from my perspective, that Welsh voices are not being heard adequately in this uh, process. It's a criminal offence that we're talking about, and criminal justice is not devolved. And I understand that the inquiry on child sexual exploitation held a listening meeting in Wales recently, and another is due uh, this week. As there is little in the way of a direct Welsh voice in the inquiry itself, are you satisfied that if concerns are raised regarding Welsh public bodies, that the Welsh Government will be properly informed and that you'll be in a position to intervene if you need to? And are you of the view that the process does enough to protect uh, past victims and survivors of abuse in Wales today? Yes, I, I think uh, it's certainly the case that, well, two things. First of all, it's absolutely imperative that where legislation is taken forward on an England and Wales basis, that Wales is fully involved. Uh, secondly, do I believe that uh, as much protection is in place uh, uh, as can be? Well, there's always a scope for more, and this is why, of course, this, it's proposed that this offence should be taken forward. I, I would uh, say one thing, however. Criminal justice is not devolved, but criminal law uh, is potentially devolved. Uh, if it's the case that we can't create criminal offences, then Amendment 66 today is out of competence. And I don't believe that uh, necessarily. I'm sure she doesn't believe that either, otherwise we wouldn't be voting on it. Uh, I have always taken the view, uh, and indeed the Supreme Court in the uh, ruling on the Agricultural Sector Wages Bill took the view, that where we can show that something is partially within competence, then we have the ability to legislate. I would argue that, for example, when it comes to uh, child protection, it is within a devolved field. And it is open to us to create criminal offences in that devolved field should we see fit. And I, it's important to make that distinction between the criminal law on the one hand, where the present settlement is silent, and criminal justice on the other, where the settlement says clearly it's not devolved. But there's nothing to stop uh, the Assembly, to my mind, passing criminal law, creating criminal offences, in areas where we can show that that area is at least partially devolved. We now move to Welsh the Democrats, and this afternoon the questions will be asked by Ive Roberts. John Llywydd. Uh, Prif wneud o, yn 2010, fe wnaeth clinigwyr o fewn bwrddiachu Betsy Cadwallada godi i pryderon ynghylch uh, y gwasanaeth ophthalmoleg. Wyddwn nhw'n cyfeiri at nifer o achosion, wedi wedi arwain at niwed diangen i gleifion. Pa bryd daeth Llywodraeth Cymru yn ymwybodol o natur y pryderon hynny? Well, I'm going to take it in of course, uh, pob claf i gael ei weld uh, ynglyn a blaenoriaeth clinigol uh, nhw. Wi'n gwybod bod y bwrdd i echyd wedi uh, bod yn ceisio i rheoli uh, rai o'r problemau sydd wedi bod uh, gyda nhw dros y ddwyfynydd diwetha, a mae yna 
gynllun gweithredu mewn lle er mwyn delio gyda uh, hwn. Mae yna bylot wi'n deall uh, o difiwn y bwrdd i hunan uh, i, uh, i wella, a'r pethau, ac wrth gwrs, os byddai'r pylot yn, yn, yn llwyddiannus, a felly fydd yna gyfle, wrth gwrs, i wella pethau ynglyn â rai o'r problemau sydd wedi bod yn y dros uh, blwyddyn y ddwy. Betsy Cadwallad University Health Board from an Ombudsman's report going back to May last year is putting the sight of thousands of patients at risk before, because of a failure to ensure that people are seen in a timely manner. I accept that there's a pilot scheme, but the pilot scheme covers 300 patients and figures suggest that there are currently 7,000 patients waiting more than 50% beyond the clinically safe waiting time in ophthalmology there are 33,000 patients waiting more than 50% beyond the waiting times in services overall. What is your government doing to ensure that across Wales people have access to timely follow-up appointments to ensure that their site is protected, certainly in ophthalmology? Well, th there is a, a, uh, an action plan in place to reduce the number of patients waiting over their target time. We would expect, of course, patients to be seen in order of clinical priority and indeed within the waiting time uh, targets. Uh, more generally across Wales, ophthalmology is one of the first priorities of the NHS Wales National Planned Care Board. And we did bring together uh, in January uh, all the ophthalmologists in Wales to share best practice and to launch a specific clinically led improvement plan for ophthalmology. When the RNIB reported last year um, that this was a growing problem, um, Government ministers dismissed the report because of methodology problems. But I think the disclosures today, as far as Betsy Cadwallader are concerned, makes it very clear that the RNIB was spot on. Let us be clear, the reports today in North Wales confirm that in some cases people have gone blind unnecessarily, the cancers have remained untreated, not because they cannot be treated, but because the NHS in Wales currently presides over a system that makes them wait too long. When it, will you be able as a government to give us cast iron guarantees that no Welsh patients will actually go blind merely because of waiting times? Well, that would be unacceptable. There's no, there's no reason trying to d defend the situation if that is the case. Uh, I can say that the Chief Medical Officer did visit with the RNIB recently uh, to meet patients and to listen to their uh, concerns. Uh, and we do expect, of course, that the Ophthalmic Plan Care Plan uh, should deliver sustainable ophthalmic services in the future that people would expect. We now move back to questions on the paper, and question three is David Rees. Will the First Minister make a statement on plans for economic growth <coughs> in the South Wales West region for the remainder of this MD term? Yes, our plans for economic growth and sustainable jobs are set out in the programme for government. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. And as you are aware, transportation is a critical element of economic growth. And from what I understand, one of the reasons to actually do the trial part-time closure at 41 was to the pinch point on the flow of traffic going westwards of that. But that has a consequence of congestion heavily on the roads. Local residents have actually had difficulty in getting to work. Some actually have been threatened with dismissal as a consequence of delays they've been experienced by, by unsympathetic employers. And uh, the economic retail aspect of the Patalba town has taken a hit. Uh, now, I accept that you've indicated that the trial will continue until the end of March and the data will be collected after that point. But after that point, will you look at the opportunity to actually suspend the trial to actually give the opportunity to see if the economic growth of the town can actually get back to a situation where it was before? Yes, I can say to the member, the current trial period, as he says, runs until the end of this month. The decision will be taken before the end of the trial on whether to continue the temporary closures based on the evidence to date. A decision will then be taken in May following analysis of the full trial data, including discussion obviously with Neath Patalbert Council as well, as to whether to proceed with public consultation, and is whether, whether to proceed with public consultation for a, pull, a full permanent closure order. So the next stage is to take the decision on whether the closure should remain or not uh, while the evidence is being assessed. Byron Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, I'm sure that you agree with me uh, that the quicker we establish clear governance and budgetary arrangements for the city regions, the faster we can support economic growth, just as we are seeing across the UK and other city regions. With that in mind, can you outline a timescale when we will see the governance and budgetary arrangements for the city regions and a clear line on their objectives? Well, I'd argue that's happening now. So Terry Matthews, of course, in the Swansea city region is uh, being very dynamic and constructive in developing a vision that's bold and deliverable for the benefit of the city and indeed for Wales as a whole. And I do very much welcome the progress made by the uh, board and the vision they have set out for Swansea. Bethan Jenkins. 
Um, Prif fwyd ni dod yn amlwg mae'n alot o ddictyr uh, yn Mwtalbeth yn clun â cau um, Junction 41. Um, ac hefyd, tybed fyddwch chi gallu dweithio ni, beth sydd yn digwydd gyda marchnata um, tir llwyd o gwmpas um, yr ardal lle mae'r PDR, uh, 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 Peripheral Distributor Road, sydd nawr yn hab y way, achos sy'n credu bod y lot o bobl yn meddwl bod y ffordd hynny ddim yn arwain at fawr o ddatblygiad. Sy'n credu bod y pobl lleol yn gallu deall mwy beth sydd yn digwydd gan ei llywod ych chi yn hyd destun Junction 41, tyson nhw'n gwybod beth yn gwmwys sydd ar y gweill gyda datblygu, um, datblygu busnesau ar hyd y ffordd hynny. Well, mae'r hewl i hyn an uh, yn rhywbeth sydd bod o les mawr uh, i'r dre, yn rhoi ffordd o sgoi i'r dre i'r de, a hefyd wrth gwrs yn agor lan llawer iawn o, o, o dir. Ni'n gweld wrth gwrs datblygu ar ein cymryd lle ar hyn o bryd, uh, ag wrth gwrs ni'n erbyn uh, wrth gweithio gyda rai o'r um, Personalion Tir, fel ABP, a gan y blaen gweld datblygiad yn uh, cynyddu yn y uh, pen draw. Question 4, Jocelyn Davis. Thank you, President Officer. Um, <coughs> how is the Welsh Government meeting its international human rights obligations? Well, we're fully committed to meeting those obligations, and we work closely with bodies such as the Equality and Human Rights Commission <coughs> and account for our progress through formal reporting channels. Oh, well, I, I'm very pleased to hear that uh, you were committed uh, to meeting those obligations because, as you'll know, the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child has been unequivocal uh, in saying that physical punishment of children must be prohibited for countries to meet those human rights obligations. So, First Minister, when will Wales stop being in breach? Well, I mean, I don't accept that Wales is in breach, but the point she tries to make, of course, is in relation to the vote later on this afternoon. She and I are not necessarily in different positions over the principle here, uh, but in different positions in terms of the potential implementation. I think it's important, uh, first of all, for parties to declare in their manifestos what they plan to do with regard to the defence of reasonable chastisement, chastisement. And secondly, of course, to have a full consultation with the public on this as to how that would work. I think that is the, a more sensible way forward. It can be done in a short space of time. There's no question about that. Uh, to take forward the, uh, a, a principle which I know many members uh, are keen to move forward with. Gwenta Thomas. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you agree with me that the inclusive policy-making model developed by the Welsh Government requires that all policy and legislation is developed so that it meets the identified needs of individuals and communities, placing a citizen focus based on the principles of human rights, fairness, respect, equality and dignity at the centre of all our policy actions. And will you also agree with me that the Social Services and Wellbeing Wales Act 2014 has an approach to social services that has at its core all of these factors? Indeed, I would agree with the member on both counts, and I'm grateful to her for the work, of course, that she put in in taking the bill through uh, when it became an act. And inclusive policy making is fundamental to successful uh, policy making. It's at the heart of the Act, as the Member has said, and it's underpinned the development of the regulations that build upon the framework of the Act, and that is what we will continue to do as uh, th that process develops. Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. First Minister, in November last year, the Wales UNCRC Monitoring Group published a briefing to mark the 25th anniversary of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. They expressed concern that there was insufficient focus on children human rights in the governmental policy and legislation and a lack of transparency and accountability in public expenditure for children and young people. What action will the Welsh Government take to ensure Wales meets its international human rights obligations with regards to the children? Well, we've done that through uh, the measure. But of course, let's remember that we were the first nation to have a children's commissioner. Uh, and that is uh, evidence of the commitment given not just by those who were in government at the time, but all uh, parties in this chamber to uh, the importance of uh, developing the right kind of opportunities and protection for children. I think that is something that we can take great, uh, great pleasure from. Uh, that's not enough of itself, of course, in, in, in the future. We build on the measure and, of course, we, we look uh, to ensure that uh, what is now being planned uh, at Westminster in terms of, of the criminal law uh, is something that uh, would fit appropriately uh, with uh, what has been done here in terms of the establishment of the Children's Commissioner and the, uh, the measure in the past. Question 5, Simon Thomas. Dwi'r llawer pa gama y bydd y prif yn ei dod gan ei cymryd i weithredu ar gymellion a doddiad ar Arthur Graham Donaldson. Well, Arthur Donaldson wedi llunio gwleidigaeth gyffroes ar gyfer dyfodol dysgu yng Nghymru. 
Uh, of course, Mary Casselli are renouncing with on a profession, get a Rienia Kevish, see the Silwade, uh, Gath uh, Manalion, E. Bid uh, Manalion, and Lean are Rena and Kali Gahoi, the Vori, and Bid Manalion Pesach, and McKenzie with three D and Dilin and Urhav. Dear Pivini Doga, we in Catino get a key, but on another Dodded Cafois, at Manadodded Triloide, I'm Sivirical Coiso and Cafedino, Gana profession, Gan Vieni. A, a gan pawb sydd yn ddiddori ym maes addysg yng Nghymru. Un o'r pethau sydd wedi digwydd sech hynny ers hynny yw bod nifer o bobl wedi bod yn pwyso am y chwnegu mwy a, i, I mewn i'r cwriculwm ac yn ofni bod rhywbeth he, heb cael eu cwybwyll falle yn y droddiad yr athodonus. Nod i fi, a, mantais yr y droddiad fel y mae yr argymellion fel y mae yna yw bod yn gadael lle i hyblygwydd a dyfaisgafwch ar arweiniad gan y thrawon a gan pobl proffesiynol yn y maes yma a bod yn Braf iawn gweld rhywbeth fel yna yn cael eu sefydlu yng Nghymru heb law drwm unrhyw llywodraeth ar y broses. Felly fyddwch chi'n aros yn gadan wrth y degwyddorion yna i ymddiriad yn y proffesiwn gyda'r cefnogaeth ar y ffordiant iawn i arwain yn pobl ifanc neu bellach yn wir drwy'r cam y cyffoes yma fel bod nhw'n gallu wir yn arwain y byd yn, yn, yn addysgiadol hefyd. Wrth gwrs, mae'n y gyd bwysedd, wrth gwrs, mae'n uh, gyntaf, wrth gwrs, mae'n bwysig bod na uh, framwaith. Uh, oti fewn ma thlawan gallu dysgu a hefyd fframaeth yng Nghymru pa uh, bynciau sydd ar y gael. Uh, ar yr un pryd, wrth gwrs, i adael i a thlawan i ddefnyddio sgiliau proffesiynol, er mwyn dysgu, nid i allan ni. Uh, un o'r problem ei, wrth gwrs, mae'n siwgymau'n dod sylwadau yng Nghymru a byth dylai fod yn y cwriculwm, dwi'n sy'n y cwriculwm i bopeth. Uh, a felly, bydd rhan o'r ymgynghori fydd yn cymryd lle dros yr haf yn ystyried pa byth dylai fod yn y cwriculwm a byth falle sydd, sydd ddim gallu fod yn y cwriculwm ar hyn o O bryd. Ond hwn yn ymsoed cyffroes iawn, mae'r aifi wneud. Uh, mae'n rhywbeth hollol newydd i, uh, I Gymru. Uh, mae'n y gyfle mawr, dyn ni fyn hyn, er mwyn sicrhau bod gyda ni uh, cwriculwm yn y dyfodol sydd uh, yn grif iawn ynglyn â'n pobl ifanc i. Ni. John Griffiths. Yes, First Minister, in terms of that balance that you mentioned and frameworks, I wonder if you would agree with me that we must encourage our young people to develop their physical abilities uh, and a love of physical activity and sport for confidence, achievement, quality of life, and good health. And would you further agree that that can be effectively achieved through a physical literacy framework that would put physical activity at the core of our curriculum? Well, we know the importance of physical activity. He and I uh, share a love of sport. He has been more successful of late than myself, as my shape will show, uh, in terms of being able to carry that through. But yes, it is important that we develop the whole character of an individual, that much is, is true. Uh, the question then is how do we fit in uh, physical activity to the uh, uh, the curriculum and try and get that balance uh, right. Lord Amos. Dear Shavit, any that's going to be a good thing to do with the Gwynedd and 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 the a phobl ifanc. Gallwch chi ddweud wrth ni pa fath o ddigwyddiadau mae'r gwynidog yn sôn amdano. Ac yn dilyn cwestiwn Simon Thomas, gallwch chi hefyd sicrhau y bydd y digwyddiadau yma yn ystyrlon uh, ac yn ystyried barn pawb? Well, fe wedi si yn gynarach bydd y mynyddion ynglyn ar uh, gweithgareddau. Bydd yn cymryd lle yn cael ei ddacan uh, y fori. Ac wrth gwrs, uh, bydd y aelodau wedi ni yn uh, gallu uh, gweld beth yw'r cynlluniau ynglyn ar dyfodol. William Powell. George Lowith. First Minister, as a parent, school governor, and indeed qualified teacher, I was pleased to see uh, that um, my former union, ATL, welcomed uh, strongly the recommendations on the breadth and depth of Professor Donaldson's uh, report. Uh, I concur uh, particularly with the renewed emphasis that there is upon the uh, individual focused learning experience that must be heart, at the very heart of uh, teaching in our, in our schools. Uh, one concern, however, that has been expressed in some quarters is how that greater uh, breadth of the curriculum uh, is to be delivered uh, in some parts of rural Wales, where the size of schools make it more challenging to have that full breadth of the curriculum. What reassurance can you offer uh, that the needs of uh, a broad curriculum will also be delivered for pupils across rural Wales? These are matters, of course, which we consider. It's important that uh, pupils in rural areas are not substantially disadvantaged by the fact they live in rural areas. 
Uh, it's not always possible to replicate um, the education system exactly across Wales. There are good reasons perhaps why that shouldn't be uh, there anyway in terms of replication, but the opportunities should be there. As part of the consultation process that will be announced tomorrow, we hope, of course, that these matters will be raised and then, of course, they can be worked through towards a solution. Question six, Elena Parrott. Thank you. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's priorities for improving transport in South Wales Central? Yes, they're in the draft National Transport Plan. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Overcrowding, as you all well know, on the Valleys Lines is a huge issue for my constituents. And, of course, the design of the current franchise is not at all helpful in that. Um, but before we order any new trains, we must produce a specification for the services and the capacity that we want to deliver in the long term. Indeed, we can't design a new franchise or even begin to think about ordering any new trains until that work is done. Um, the franchise ends in three years. When will that specification be completed and published? Well, that is something that we're moving forward with. I mean, bear in mind that it's only really relatively recently that there was agreement to devolve uh, rail franchising fu functions to the Welsh Government uh, from 2017. That will now enable us to control, specify and award future Wales and Borders franchises. And these are matters that we're now considering now that we know where we stand in terms of the devolution of the franchise. May count in uh, First Minister, one of the objectives of obviously <coughs> uh, the transport plan is, is to increase connectivity between some of the connective black spots that we actually have, for example, in my constituency around the, the Bather area, Lantrit Vardra, Tonnerevel, uh, Church Village area, which are effectively rail connectivity black spots. Um, and do you agree with me that one of the objectives to come out of the, uh, the metro and the transport planning should be to improve that connectivity, to give people an opportunity, possibly with railway uh, developments and so on, uh, in order to ensure that people have the option uh, when travelling to Cardiff or travelling to work opportunities around South Wales to get off the road, to get on the rail or other forms of transport? Yes, I know the member is particularly um, uh, keen to see the reopening of the line uh, from Ponteclean and Bairdai to, uh, to Cardiff. Uh, of course, uh, what the National Transport Plan commits to doing is to developing and assessing schemes identified in the Metro Impact uh, Study. And part of that work will consider the needs of people living to the northwest of Cardiff and the need to make sure that the needs they have will be met in the future. Andrew Archie Davis. Thank you, um, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, obviously anyone travelling into Cardiff, especially in the mornings on Lantrescent Road, for example, or coming from the east, from St Melons and along the A48, or indeed from the Vale of the Morgan, uh, is faced with a pretty horrendous experience. Uh, we're all looking forward to the delivery of the metro system, uh, but that is some considerable time away. Uh, what uh, encouragement or what words of comfort uh, can you give to many of the motorists who find themselves in the daily grind that the Welsh Government is working with local authorities to develop alternatives um, and sustainable alternatives that will take traffic off the roads and provide a realistic transport model for South Wales? Well, I mean, look at what we've done in the past, the reopening of the Ebu Valley line, the opening of the Vale of Morgan line, of course, uh, that had been long closed until it was reopened. Uh, one of the areas we need to look at now is to look at increasing frequency on the Vale of the Morgan line, potentially as well on the Llenby Valley uh, line, uh, when considering, of course, the, uh, the metro system as a whole. But we've seen, of course, a significant increase in the numbers of people using public transport, particularly the trains over the past uh, 10 years. Uh, that is uh, a trend that I expect to continue in the future, and the metro will be uh, exceptionally important in terms of delivering a more frequent service and possibly new services to many people in the future. Leanne Wood. First Minister, due to a, a combination of funding cuts from both the Welsh Government and local authorities, there are many bus services that have been cut throughout the country, and some of these uh, have been in my region in South Wales Central. And I'm concerned that a situation could develop whereby people are unable to travel to work or to important hospital uh, appointments uh, unless they have a car. <laughs> Is the Welsh Government keeping a record of the best services that have been lost? And if so, what plans or mechanisms do you have to restore them if demand uh, is there for that? Devolution of bus regulation would be a start, which we don't have at the moment. That is something that there is uh, at least agreed to be devolved uh, under the uh, current uh, system. One of the problems that I face as a constituency member, I'm sure she has as well, is that where there are complaints about bus services, the bus regulator, if I, if I remember rightly, is in Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, the experience I've had is, has been a poor one uh, in terms of taking up complaints. I look very much forward to seeing the deregulation of, uh, of bus, uh, the regulation of everyone, the regulation of buses being devolved in order that we can offer a more holistic approach to bus services in the future. Question seven, Susie Davis. 
Um, first, will the First Minister make a statement on the role of playing fields in meeting Welsh Government's objectives in relation to well-being? Yes, having access to playing fields is important. Uh, it ensures, of course, that people have opportunities to participate in recreational uh, facilities, uh, and we are now moving forward uh, to dealing with the implementation of the playing fields regulations. Uh, well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. And I heard your very positive response to John Griffiths' question earlier regarding the physical uh, elements of the uh, school curriculum. Yet, as a result of your local authority cuts, some local authorities are taking a rather panicked approach um, to uh, playing fields and green public spaces. Uh, Swansea Council has already targeted playing fields in Sketty and unsuccessfully in Ponte Dillis, driven by a dash for cash for other projects rather than pupils' health needs. With Donaldson recommendations fresh in your mind, what advice can you give schools to defend their position against those raids? Uh, thank you. Well, as I said, we're considering now the uh, regulations uh, and how to proceed with them. Uh, ultimately, of course, the sale of school land is a matter for each local authority. Uh, there are safeguards in place in terms of um, how planning permission is granted. But the playing fields measure, of course, uh, which was passed here some years ago, is something that we're considering now in terms of passing regulations. We certainly wouldn't want to get to the position of seeing the same situation in Wales as we've seen in England with mass sell-offs of playing fields. Ellen Jones. <coughs> Village Green, fel Llecyn, uh, Glass. Mesur cynllunio mach uh, Llywodraeth Chi'n Gyflwyno wedi gyflwyno ar hyn o bryd, yn mynd i gwtogi i'r allu cymunedau i uh, gallu cyfrestru uh, i cei eich chwarae a diogelu cei eich chwarae drwy'r broses yma. Ydych chi'n barod i edrych ac i drafod gyda'r gweinidog uh, cynllunio i sicrhau fod yr hawl yma sydd gan gymunedau ar hyn o bryd ddim yn cael ei lasturreiddio gan y ddeddfwriaeth i chi'n ei gyflwyno. We see Peter Black. Thank you, Sergeant Officer. Minister, Susie Davis has already referred to the situation in Swansea where, in fact, there are proposals to sell off a lot of playing fields, very similar to what happened in England under the previous UK government. Um, in England, though, there is, of course, the Localism Act, which um, protects um, sports fields, but that has not been brought in in Wales. Is it your government's intention to try to bring that extra protection to playing fields in Wales by, um, by um, commencing the Localism Act here? Oh, well, it's an English act. I mean, work has begun to amend the draft regulations under the playing fields measure, which is Welsh legislation, prior to a final decision on the introduction of those, over, of those regulations over the course of the next few months. Legislation already exists in Wales uh, to, to deal with this. Uh, it has historically not been a problem in Wales that it was in England. But nevertheless, I hear and I see what, uh, what's being proposed in Swansea. And that's why, of course, we're considering now how best to take these regulations forward. Question eight, Beth and Jenkins. Will the First Minister make a statement about concerns raised regarding Swansea University School of Management? Well, well, these are, of course, entirely a matter for management and governors at Swansea University. They are autonomous bodies and they are responsible for their own affairs. I hear what you say, uh, Minister, but you will know that uh, the internal paper last year described certain economic staff as a cancer, and since then I've been contacted and I've met many students and interested parties that feel intimidated enough to ask that I keep their names confidential for fear that the department or the university will take action against them. One of them said, and I quote, a university is where freedom of speech and the ability to learn and question should be encouraged. First Minister, do you support this view and what can your government do to raise these very real issues with Swansea University whereby students are fearful to go and access education because of intimidation and bullying within that department? Well I am aware of some of the issues which have been reported in the press in respect to the School of Management at Swansea University. Uh, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment in detail on those issues with regard to an autonomous HE institution. What I will say of course is I hope that these managerial issues can be resolved swiftly uh, to the satisfaction of staff and students because 
Uh, if this continues, it will be detrimental to the good reputation of the department and the university. So I would encourage all those involved, including the university itself, of course, to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Susie Davis. Yes, <laughs> Na, I was a Nina previous scholar he nan, uh, Minam Van Gosport na, Gunna the Maori board, Nid Dimond, and a blue in Academy, the Wetha on, and a blue in Academy, Hin Havid. So my uh, previous previous scholar would tell in Kali study, I'd well previous scholar Dad Ross Ben E. Vindy, Bissing Boy Secret Cross, you sicker high board, a Huna and a Par High, and a Pendrow, a board, um, a problem, so they would be Kali. Uh, so I'm done. I plan how much them and a fifth year are in order to be Thank you, First Minister. We now move to item two.